see what I'm doing. It's hard to see the black on the um, colour of the paper you've got. Oh, all right, I'll do it light then. Here we go. So I've just gone over that in some white. Is that a bit oh, better? That's better. Yep. Great. Okay, Thank you. awesome. No worries. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah, so sometimes I, I can see things better than you can from here. Um, so that's our basic banana shape. That's pretty much all we want to uh, get down on there. So you just want to make sure that when we put it on the table, we've got a fairly flat sort of spot just there where it can sit. And we'll bang a shadow under that later on. Okay. So I'm going to pause now, if that's okay. And we might go and have a um, uh, glass of water or something. And I'll come back in about 10. So it's, it's 1.52 now. So if I come back at 2 o'clock and then we can get stuck into colouring all of this in and mixing some colours around and having a bit of fun. Excellent. So Thank shall... you. Excellent. Lovely. So I'll see you. And you said tea. Did you not wine? No, it's a bit early for wine. I'm going to save that for about four. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Be back Thank soon. Okay. okay. All right, I am back. So let's get stuck into this and um, grow a banana, hey? Eh? So first up, we want to fill in the whole thing with yellow because obviously it's yellow. So that's going to be our base colour for this one. And then we can start to add our blues and reds to create some lovely shadows and things. So I'm going to pick up the yellow. And again, same um, process as before. We're just going to wipe it over and fill up the tooth. Try not to press too hard. If you do press very hard, you'll find that you get quite a lot of dust and um, it kind of gathers everywhere and it's difficult to get off. This paper is like a magnet for dust. So even if you tip it off, it still sort of holds on to it. And when you're working on something like this that where you're not filling in the background in, you want to try and keep the background really clean then it's a bit tricky. If you're working on an easel, you'll find the dust will drop down because of gravity, obviously. And then it, it, it tends to build up all underneath whatever you're painting. So you just get this fine film of, of pastel dust hanging onto the paper. And the only way I know to get rid of that is to either have your easel upright or slightly forward, tilt it slightly forward so you get less dust dropping down or use your kneadable eraser. So these are magical things and they'll remove quite a lot of pastel, especially if it's just a light mark on your paper. You can actually dab it around like this and pick up a lot of the dust or pigment off your paper and get it nice and clean. But we're not going to worry too much about that today unless you want to frame your banana. And who knows, you might love it so much that you will hanging in the kitchen. All right, so we've pushed this in. And if you've on, you're on a darker kind of paper, then you probably have some of that showing through, which is quite nice. But what I want to do now is, is blend it in. Actually, I'm going to fill in my end bit as well. So just fill in the entire thing with your yellow. OK, now just. We'll make sure you've got a reasonably clean finger and we're going to push all of this into the paper. So pushing that in and I'm kind of pulling my finger around in the direction that the banana is going, which is sort of sideways and curved because I want to try and uh, emulate the shape of the banana. So whatever you're painting or drawing, try to pull the pastel or your finger if you're blending around in the same direction as the thing that you're drawing. So for instance, this morning we did a duck on a pond and 
it was all about moving the pastels around, you know, to emulate the, the ripples in the pond and pulling it around in the, in the same direction all the time so that the more you do that, the more the thing that you, you're painting becomes comes alive because you're just following the, the right direction and it's sort of becoming more rounded, I guess. So already looking at that um, through through the computer screen, I can see that some of the dark paper is showing through underneath. And I don't mind that because this banana has quite a lot of shadow and little dark spots on it. So that's a nice thing. So now we're going to have a little bit of a fiddle around up in the stem area. That's where it's quite brown. And I want to try and make some browns with our reds and blues. And if we have to, we can add a little bit of black or blue violet, which is my other favorite dark. So let's pop a bit of, let's think about this. If we put red on yellow, that's gonna make an orange. So I'm gonna pop a bit of red over my yellow stem or stalk, like that. And then I'm gonna push it in, probably wanna use a small finger, a little finger or a blender if you have one handy. So blenders are very good for getting into small spaces like this. If you need to pull that down into the banana itself, don't stress, we can cover it up later. So if it kind of bleeds down or leaks down or smudges into the other bit, it's no drama, we can sort that out. So if you do have a blender, um, let me see, I've got some here. So there's a few, a couple of options that I know of. There's probably more, way more on the market, but this is what I have. So this is a Montmartre brand, and you can get these in a set of six. And each tip is different. So this tip has like a flat end on it and a curved under bit. So it's a bit like buying different sized brushes, I suppose. Um, this is another one out of the same set, and it's got a really pointy tip. So they each have different ends on them. So you can get into the really fiddly bits, into the tiny corners where your fingers are too chunky to get. So they're great for that sort of thing. Blenders are awesome. And they have a rubber end on them. So they, they feel like fingers. Um, the other option I use is this one. It's an Art Spectrum brand. And they come in, this is number two. So it's a small one, but they come in big chunky ones as well. And same thing, you can use those to blend your pastels and bits. This one squeaks a bit, but it's my favourite. I like it the best. And I've only got that one in that size and it seems to work for whatever I need to blend. Most of the time I use my fingers because I just love doing that. Um, the other one some people like is this paper stump one. I'm not a fan because I feel like it removes a lot of the pastel rather than blending it in. So. Yeah, I'm not, I don't like it that much, but some people enjoy them and they're, they're quite good for um, pencil and charcoal and drawing and stuff like that. So they do have their place. Okay, so we've got our little orange section happening here. Now, mine's getting fatter and fatter by the minute because I've got fat fingers and they're getting in there and smudging everything, but I'm not gonna get too concerned about that. Every banana is different, so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit fat and chunky. I'm putting blue over this now. What I wanna make is a mud, a brown, muddy color. And so if I put a bit of blue on the top of that and then blend that in, I've gotta find another small finger or maybe a blender, I might cheat and use a blender. Push that around and see how it starts to make brown because we put all those three colors together. So they're making these beautiful muddy dirt brown colors. And because I've got different amounts of blue and red and yellow in different areas, it's starting to look like it's got some texture on it. So one side's got a bit more red, there's a bit more yellow across the top that's gone sort of an orangey brown. Where I've got more blue, it's a bit darker and more purpley. So really um, getting some nice texture on there. And the end of that pair where, where we're working does have you know some, um, lumpy bits and bumpy bits and, and all kinds of texture. So you can actually have a bit of a fiddle around with that and maybe pick up your yellow again and touch that on in a couple of spots. So where I can see the light part kind of poking out. I think I haven't made my stem long enough. 
as I said, every one is its own shape, so it doesn't really matter. And if I put them yellow where the light bits stick out or come closer to me or towards me, and then just blend it in gently so that it's not too sharp or defined, see how that's now starting to look a little bit 3D and giving me a bit of volume and body. And then if I want it to darken off, perhaps on that top left section, there's a little dark bit there that's um, sticking out. So I can darken that off and put a bit more. I'm doing that with blue, sorry. I forgot to say what colour. So literally only using those three colours for now. The nice thing is you can always use others or add things or try others later on. But we're just going to play with these ones for now. And then when we want some more drama, we can add some black or, as I said, blue-violet, because that's my favourite dark, or white on the light bit. So I quite like how that's starting to merge together and make a lovely little brown kind of colour. You'll find the more you blend, so I've just blended everything and it's all kind of lost its definition now. So when, when you do blend a lot, you tend to lose all your sharp edges and your bright colours. And that's why a lot of pastel artists don't like to blend because they like to leave the colour nice and vibrant on the surface. But as a blender, you can actually do both. So I like to just maybe push in the first few layers and then come back over with my pastel again and brighten up a couple of spots so that it sort of sits more on the surface. And I'm just patting that in now. I'm not blending it too much. You'll find the more you blend, the more muddy it gets. And then if you just dab at certain spots and let them sit on the surface rather than pushing all the colour around together, it stays nice and light and bright. So have a little play with that area. I've just been putting some dark, like blue for the dark sections and yellow for the light sections, just to try and create you know, that lumpy end on my banana. And you can see that the light is coming from above. So the light's catching kind of the top or the left side of, of the, the um, stem. And the shadow side on the right is where it's darker. So just knowing that helps you to kind of determine where, you, where you're going to make it a bit darker and where you want it to be lighter. So I'm going to try a bit of red and see what that does with the blue. And what that will do is make it more purple. And purple is a beautiful shadow colour. So you can kind of keep adding a little bit of this and a little bit of that until it you know, becomes the colour you want it to be. It's quite fun. And you can get that quite dark, which is nice. I love drama in my art. I really like creating light light bits and dark dark bits it just makes it more interesting to look at i think cool so we've dabbled around in there for a little while and now i'm going to um, get down into the body of the banana so i know it might seem like a really simple thing to paint and it is it's not that complicated but what we want to do is try and have a play with some of the tones and the colour. So you can see at the end of the stem there, I keep wanting to pick up my black, but I'm resisting. I'll put it away so I can't, <laughs> can't get to it. So what I want to do at the base of the stem here is get that a little bit darker where it comes into the yellow of the banana and then I can yellow up that section because what I've done is smudged my brown down onto the yellow section so now it's all kind of a bit blurry. I'm going to come back in with yellow now, where the stem and the banana kind of meet, and put a bit more yellow in there. So you can see, as I'm getting a little bit more fussy about what areas I'm doing, I'm doing smaller movements and using just sort of one end of my pastel. So not not using the sharp edge because I don't want to create a hard line. But I'm I've got I'm holding it flat on its side basically, but I'm tilting it a little bit so that I've got more pressure on one end than the other. And so that's allowing me to kind of get a bit more pigment down on the paper. And I'm just going gently around there and, and kind of blending it in 
and only. And as I'm doing that, I'm moving it all around in different directions. So this is the yellow. What I'm trying to do is get some pigment down on here so I can then use, get other colours on the top and then start to push them out. But I want to get some pigment down first because then I'll have something to work with. And noticing also where it's lightest. So it's lightest in the curve on the top of the banana there because the light's coming from above. So I want to get a fair bit of my yellow into that area. And I'm just gently swooshing it around in that space. There's also a lovely bit of light bouncing off this underneath section on the left. It's obviously bouncing off the surface, the table or whatever it's sitting on. And because that surface is white, it's reflecting up onto the bottom part of the banana here. So we'll lighten that up with some white later. But just, it's a good thing to note. Just, you know, look at things and, and really study where the light's coming from and where the lightest or darkest areas are in the mid and so forth. So once we've got some of that down on there, now it's time to kind of start looking at the shadows in this banana. So I can see that on the right hand side, on the right shoulder, I'm going to call it, just below where the stem ends, it's a little darker because it's not hitting the light there. So I've got red and I'm just dragging red around into that area that's a little bit darker. And if you just wipe it over the top of what you've got down in the yellow, and then we can start to push it around with fingers in a minute. Okay. So put your red where you see shadow. And it's very subtle shadow, it's not too obvious. It's much darker where it's sitting on the table. So that section of the banana that's based on the table is a little darker. And then we've got this shadow side kind of on the bottom front. And then the lightest is in the middle or the top. So I've wiped a bit of red across there. I haven't blended that in yet. And I'm going to now add some blue. So what I want to do is add blue down underneath where the banana sits on the table again. And when I blend this in, it's going to go into this lovely shadowy, purpley sort of color. And then I'm going to pop a bit of blue just over the red sections that I popped in earlier. Just a little bit, just wipe it lightly. The secret is to start off lightly with your pastel and just layer them on gently so that you've got enough room to keep adding more. I love adding more. It's really nice when you can build up your layers. So just by putting those colours down and not pushing them in yet, you can kind of see how this is going to start to get some shadow and tone uh, happening. Okay, so if you're ready to get your fingers into it, then just start to pull this around. And when you pull it, you'll see how all those colours start to blend and it's kind of going this dirty brown colour. Isn't that cool? So nice. And pull it gently. So I've got quite a lot of pastel on here, so I don't need to press hard. If you press hard and rub it hard, you're going to end up making like just this dirty mud colour. What I'm trying to do is keep it quite vibrant. And to keep it vibrant, you just need to pull it lightly. So I'm hardly touching the paper. I'm just really gently pulling my finger around quite light in the direction that the banana grows. So pull it from left to right in that lovely curved shape. And that will start to emulate the shape of the banana and how it's growing. And what I'm also doing is I'm not lifting my finger off. I've, I've found this way of just leaving my finger on the paper. Sometimes it's barely touching it and other times I press really hard. But by not lifting it off, I'm avoiding making new fingerprints every time. Because if you find yourself lifting your finger, like doing these little wipey things like that, what's happening is you're pulling color down, you're picking it up on your finger, and then you're putting it back at the point where you start again, which is not always a bad thing. You may intend to do that. But if you want to keep the colours kind of merging gently without getting too dirty, 
and getting fingerprints in there. Just keep your finger on the paper. Very lightly. So that's that's usually how I, I do these sorts of things, especially on smooth things. And just kind of pull it around lightly. And that way you have this continuous kind of blending effect going on without any broken lines or, or sudden um, marks. Now down at the base where I've put the red and the blue, I'm pressing a little bit harder there because I want that to be darker. So you'll find if you press harder, so if I push this in hard, add a bit of pressure, it goes really, really dark. See that? It's quite lovely. And so, especially on this paper, the harder you press, the muddier it goes. And then you can, you can see the colour of the paper through the pastel by pushing it really hard. And sometimes that's a great thing. You want that. You want that really dark, solid um, effect. And other times you just want the colours to gently merge together and sort of sing together without turning into mud. So that's what I've tried to create around the middle area here. And then underneath, I want it to get a little bit darker. So I might add a bit more blue into that and see if I can make it more shadowy. So just have a look at how you're going and, and use your judgment. Oh, no, I want that lighter, I want more yellow in there, um, or I want that darker. So pick your darker colour. And in this instance, even though your red and your blue are very similar in tone, remember we squinted at those before, and you can hardly see which was which because they're very similar in, in how light or dark they are, whereas the yellow is the brightest. So when I squint at that, all I can see is the yellow because the red and the blue kind of merge back into my paper, which is also a mid-tone. So the reds and the blues are the darkest and then the yellow is your light. But if I want extra dark, I'm going to add more blue and see what happens. It gets kind of dirty, but I don't mind that. If you wanted it to be more purple or um, you know, more shadowy sort of colour, then you can add a bit more red and purple up a little bit. So it's a whole bunch of fun just mucking around with colours to see what amazing things you can create. I'm going to add a bit more red and then it just goes purple again and looks like my paper colour, which is okay because we'll pop some more shadow underneath later and that'll ground it and give it some gravity. So we've kind of merged these colours around on the underside of the banana because that's where the shadow is. And then of course it's lighter on the top. So what I want to do now is just blend in that lovely bright yellow that's on the top side of the banana. I'm going to wipe my fingers off so I've got a nice clean start. So a little cloth that's wet on one end and dry on the other is really handy because you can actually get your fingers really clean with the wet end and then get them nice and dry before you put them back into the pastel. So now I'm just going to pull this yellow around a bit more. I'm going to push it in a bit. I know I can add more if I want to. So the nice thing is you can always add more over the top. Well, not always. There does come a point where you can't and you'll have to either fix it uh, with spray fixative or brush some off or wet it and brush it in or something like that because the, the paper does fill up eventually, depending on how much tooth it's got. So you can see my edges are a bit blurry. I'm not that concerned about that. I can clean that up later with my kneadable eraser. So I can come in later and just dab at those edges and sharpen that up a little bit. And that should pick up those dusty bits quite easily. So the kneadable erasers are great. You can shape them in all sorts of different ways. You can get a really nice sharp knife edge on there that you can just come in around things. Um, what you need to do though is like when I wiped that just then, what happens is you get all this pigment like that on the edge of your eraser. So you need to knead it. You need to knead it in like that and find a clean bit. Otherwise you're just going to put the pigment back down. So that's why they're called kneadable because you've got to keep kneading it. And that's why mine's filthy dirty because it's full of pigment and I probably should get a new one. There's no reason why I can't really. <laughs> Just, I don't know, 
get used to using the same one. And you can pull pieces off and you know, just use little sections of it. Okay, so anyway, back to the banana. All right, so that's looking pretty, you know, I like the contrast in there. I like how the, the light is on the top and the dark is folding away underneath. I feel like I need to get more blue in under here though, because it's a little bit too red still. So have a look at yours and see how, how that feels for you. If you're not sure, walk away. Step away from the painting and view it from a distance or just give your eyes a break um, and then come back and have a look at it and you'll, you'll see things that you didn't see before. So I find that's a really good way just to figure out what I might need to change. And usually when I am working on a painting, I will stand at an easel and that way you can step back most of the time and check what you're doing. And it's a really great way to get a good perspective of your artwork. Sitting down is not ideal. I'm finding that a little bit challenging because I've always stood and been able to step back. Um, but yeah, it's a great idea if you're if you're not sure of how you're going, if you're feeling a bit lost, just step away, have a break, go get a water or just look out the window or something, but refocus your eyes and then come back to it or step away and have a look at it from a distance, it always helps. So I'm just, I've just been fiddling around with a bit of blue here and pushing that, and now I'm pushing it into my banana. And so it, it's fun to do this and just try things. I know if I need to brighten it up again, I can. If I need to quieten it down, I can. If I wanna make more mud, I can. So the blue makes it really interesting, doesn't it? It's giving it some lovely shadow and, and helping it to turn. So what we wanna do is try to make this appear as if it's a, a 3D object and not something flat. So I'm liking how that's working out so far. Um, I'm just seeing the edge of my banana. I feel like I want to make that a little bit curvier there. So see how I, when I put yellow back in, it goes bright again. So that looks a bit silly. It's like the light's not in the right spot anymore. So I'm just reshaping it and then I'm going to go over it again with the blue and the red. So you can keep doing that until you're happy with the, the colour and the tone. So now I can add some more of my blue and red and quieten that down again, get the shadow back in there. So you can redo and undo stuff quite a lot with the pastel. It's a very nice advantage to have. And of course, if you keep blending and keep getting your fingers into this, it's all gonna end up a brown banana and you'll end up you know, having it looking very muddy. So try not to blend it too much. Just try to blend it where you need to and leave some spots unblended or you know just touch it once and then leave it alone because it's so easy to just keep sticking your fingers in there and making a horrible mess <laughs> in the end. I've been guilty of that many times. Okay so that's looking all right. Got some edges to clean up but that's okay we can do that later. The other awesome thing about this color fix paper is that you can actually buy pastels the same color. So you can buy color fix pastels and they'll match the paper. So if I had a pastel this color, I could literally just, you know, color all around the air, there and cl clean up those edges and get them nice and tidy and it'll all match and you won't be able to see the difference. But I don't think I do. I keep forgetting to buy them as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just down at the other end of the banana now. We're going to put the spots on soon, but I just want to get a bit more shadow on this other end and then work on the, the tip of that edge because it's got this little little end on it like that. So I've popped some blue there and I've put blue around the outline of the end of the pastel, of pastel banana because that's kind of where it must have come off or the end of it, I don't know. Which end grows from the tree? The other end, yeah. Gosh, I know a lot about this. Okay, and so I'm gonna put a little blue line there and then I'm gonna pop a bit of red over it because I wanna dirty that up a little bit. So when I say mud or dirty, what I mean is brown, browns, earthy kinds of colors. 
which are just gorgeous. Greys, you know, those beautiful shadowy colours. Lovely. And then because I've put too much dark down there, now I want to, there's a little sh a, a shoulder on the left side here. Can you see that? And how it's a little lighter. So that's a bit of the banana that bulges out from that end. So I'm just lightening that up a little bit. A bit of yellow. And then um, as I work towards the surface and, and get enough colour down on the paper, I, I'm going to start to stop blending and start kind of dabbing instead because dabbing will allow the colour to sit on the surface. You can still see what's underneath, but it just pushes it in enough that it holds onto the paper and just stays there. So that's that's a nice, um, another gesture, I suppose, that you can use with your pastel to get different outcomes. And so as I, as I build up my layers, um, I'll stop blending so much and then just lightly touch it so that I'm just wiping it through really softly or dabbing it. Okay, so that's the end of the banana. And then I've got a little bit of shadow there and I want to lighten up the tip of it. You can see the very tip. There's just a little bit of a light colour right on the end there. That's too bright, obviously. But I can dab it off. Just dab it in with my finger and soften that off a little bit so it doesn't glow quite too much. And then I might feel like I need to change the shape a little bit again. Lost my end. And darken off in there. So again, you can keep sort of fiddling around with it and change your lines and your shapes. Get some more shadow in here and there as you as you want to. It's kind of fun. And then I just I just push that little shiny end bit in because I didn't want it to be too bright. And I'm still fiddling around. With, your, with the blue and the red and making some lines and marks in there. So that's our banana, it's looking pretty cool. Now we need to add some dots. So the dots are gonna be fun because they're a brown dot and we don't have a brown pastel. So we've got to kind of try to make it. What I've picked up is a red one. And I'm going to kind of just randomly dot that around. So you don't have to have every dot in exactly the same place as what this banana has. Because as I said earlier, they're all different and we don't have to get too specific. What I'm trying to do though is vary the size of the dot. And so I'm using the end of the pastel or the little edge of the pastel stick. But I'm, some I'm just dotting on and some I'm going to pull slightly to one direction to try to get a slightly bigger mark. But I'm just literally pushing it in. So it's, it's almost like pastel dust is sitting on the surface of my banana. I'm gonna dot a few of those around. And then I'm gonna go over them with the blue and then kind of push them in, smudge them in a little bit, but not blend. Because if you blend them, we're gonna lose all the definition of the dots. And then under there, there's a bit of... So now we're starting to leave the pastel sitting on the surface and not pushing it in anymore. So this is where you get to, you know, have your texture happening. This is a smooth item, so that's why we've blended to get that lovely smooth effect of the shape of the banana. But now we've, we're coming to the, the surface, so we're going to start to kind of let some of it sit on the top. So what I'm going to do now is just dot with my blue over the top of the red dot that I did. Not exactly, it doesn't matter if you don't quite get it right on the top. Obviously some are going to miss and that's okay. Dot those around. You don't have to get every single one. It really doesn't, doesn't matter too much. This is just a little exercise in colour missing. So. Don't get too stressed about it. And I'm just going to kind of wipe a bit of blue around where I want a bit more shadow. So see how now the colour is starting to sit on the surface rather than pushing it in and it's a bit more vibrant. 
and you can still see what's underneath it. So because we've built a foundation of shadow and light, then we can kind of wipe colour over the top and it's giving it that lovely depth. Nice. Um, excuse yeah. me, Jeannie. Yeah. I'm really sorry, I had to take a phone call then, so I've just missed all the dots. So can you just explain <laughs> the dots on and I'll get to those? Of course. Yeah, so what I did with the dots was I picked up my red and okay. I just literally dotted it on in random spots. So they don't have to be exactly where they are on the picture. You can yeah. make this your banana. And it leaves like a little crumb, I guess, of, of dust on your page. And then I picked up the blue and I kind of put the blue just over the top of those little red marks. So now they're sort of purplish, but I haven't blended anything yet. So that's where we were up to. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> and just, you're right. And then just wiping a bit of blue just softly over the surface because what I'm trying to do is get a little bit of shadow, a bit more shadow, I suppose, going on. Okay. I'm just letting. All right. Yep. Cool. Good. I'll keep yabbering away anyhow. <laughs> and, um, and so by wiping it over the surface, you're starting to build up that beautiful texture and painterly kind of look. Because we don't want this to look like an actual banana. It's got to be a little bit arty farty, I reckon anyway. And so I'm just looking back at this stem and I'm adding a bit more blue and red into there because I want to get a bit more depth or some dark going on. So just keep looking around. I know it's only a single item and this is not a terribly complicated class but it's a great little exercise just to practice your colours and see what happens when you put them together. And as I said we're going to pick up blue violet and a little bit of white at the end and then we can really get some nice lights and shadows going on. Okay so if you've done your dots and you've got a reasonably clean finger give it a give it another wipe. Now I'm just going to push them in. So literally just push with my finger. Don't pull it, pull it or, or blend it. Just push your finger onto it. So what we're doing is pressing, pressing all the dust into the paper. And you'll find some look blue, some look red. doesn't matter. That's okay. You just want to push them in so that they kind of sink into it a little bit and they're not going to fall off when you tip up your paper. That also kind of softens off, off the dots a little bit so that they're not as obvious or sitting on the surface. And we get that lovely mottly sort of look. And you'll find as you do that, because your finger's picking up colour from each one, and then if you dab the next one, it's starting to create this sort of, I don't know, shadowy effect, which I don't mind. That's quite nice. So if you feel like those dots are too red or too blue, maybe try a bit of yellow over the top. Um, sorry, a, a weird noise just happened. I don't know what that meant. So if someone's gone or come in or something, just let me know. And I can press the button. So I'm going to add a little bit of my yellow over those blue and red dots just to see if I can get it a bit more brown. The yellow is light, so that's going to add some little highlights, which is not what I want. Now it looks like it's got pimples or something. So I'm going to dab them in again too. So the more you dab something or the more you push it around, the dirtier or muddier it gets. And it's kind of more muted, which is fine. Good. Done here. Fun to do something that's not serious and just enjoy the process. So I've got a few fingerprints going on in there. You probably have too. So just see if you can kind of smush around them a little bit and soften off the edges so that they're not obvious. Big fat fingerprints sitting in there. So that's our little banana. It looks pretty cool, doesn't it? And 
when you're ready, we might pick up a bit of black or blue violet and um, pop some of that in. Now, blue violet is my favourite dark. So it's like a black. It looks almost like black, but it's a very dark, dark purple. And it's wonderful for shadows and creating dark spots. And it keeps it warm because um, black is great. I love the drama of black. And if you wanted to, you could use black if you don't have blue violet um, and that'll be fine but the, the blue violet is just lovely because it's got this beautiful purpley tinge to it and it's really nice for shadows so we're going to add a little bit of that in here and there just to get some more drama in but before we do that just have a look at what you've done and see how it's looking and um, see how you feel about that and if you if you, you might not want to add any more dark, you might, might want to add some highlights or a bit more light or something. So it's always good to walk away. I've just got up and walked away too. Break from, from the eyes. If your eyes get tired, I'm looking at that same thing. I'm also going to take a photo of my desk and everything while it's all sitting there in action. Bananas everywhere. Yeah, so if you're ready and you have a black or a blue violet handy, we're going to pop a bit of that. What I want to do is put it under the banana so it sits down on the table or the surface that it's on. Um, whenever you do something like this, it's always good to have a bit of a shadow or um, a surface you know, to give it gravity. And there's a little shadow that wanders off over to the right. Can you see that one? So obviously the light is top left um, and that's casting a very soft shadow on this table surface. And then right underneath the banana, it's really dark. And then we've got another soft shadow coming out on the other side, but not quite as far. So with the blue violet, it's a very soft pastel and you'll get a, a lot of bang for your buck with this one because you don't need very much. <coughs> I'm losing my voice. I'm talking too much. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling that across my page because I want it to be a lovely, smooth, soft shadow. So I'm pulling it from left to right to try and get that feeling of a surface or um, shadow underneath it. So it's quite dark, but I, quite, I like that. It's nice. And then just to darken up under the banana, so just here where it sits on the table, so I put a little bit of my blue violet, hardly any on there, just wiped a tiny bit on, and then pull it up from the base in towards the banana. So if you start at the bottom of the banana and then pull your finger up so that you're trying to get that lovely shadow rounded effect from the bottom up into the body of it. So that's where blending in a direction has a massive impact because you're actually pulling it up into the body of the banana and you're creating that gorgeous shadow underneath it. So now I need to darken up again where it sits on the table because that's all disappeared into my banana. <laughs> and that's wonderful, isn't it? Because you can come back in and do that. So I can actually get a nice hard line across there again. With that. And that kind of just grounds everything. Now, remember we talked about this little bit of light. I'll oh, hang on. I'm going to hang on to this dark one for a little bit longer. Just touch up the end. So touch up that end. I want it a bit darker there. Create more drama. That's what it's all about. It's about adding lights and darks to create some drama in your, in your artwork. And give it a bit of, you know, wow. Okay, and just under that bottom left section of the banana, just before it hits the table, it's a bit darker there too, so we can put a bit more dark there. And then we've got that little light bit, so we can come back into there in a minute with some yellow or white or very pale lemon. While I've got my dark in my hand, I'm going to jump up into the stem and just darken off in a couple of spots up there that I'd like to make a bit more 
interesting. And then you can dab that gently with your fingers so it kind of pushes it in but doesn't blur too much. So you're not going to get it too dirty. So my banana is extremely fat, but that's okay. And while I'm here, I've got a few little, see there's some little dots at the bottom of the banana just in the shadow there. So I'm going to do a, oops, a few of those. I just pressed too hard and made a whole big crumb on there. So I've got to shake that off now. Try not to blow it. It's so tempting to want to blow off, blow the dust off your page, but you'll end up with pastel all over your house. Not advisable. Okay, I'm just going to darken off back in the bottom here. Again, I, I like drama in my art. I like to make things super dark and super bright and then have lots of beautiful mids in between. Okay, so I've noticed the edge. If you're noticing your edges are a bit fuzzy and you've got some extra bits there, you might want to try and get them off before you put your light in. I'm just going to clean up the edge around here for a minute with my eraser. So try, try and make sure you get a nice sharp edge on it so that it keeps the, the edge of the banana nice and clean. Down on the other side. So you, you go outside the lines quite a bit with pastels there because they're so chunky and they're chalky. So it's, it's tricky, it's hard to get a really fine line. Not impossible, but it's a challenge. So, and I've left pastel on my paper from when I put the pastels down on there. Let's just rub that out. If it doesn't rub out, you can dab it out. So, same as using pastels, you can use the kneadable eraser in lots of different ways. And I find dabbing is usually the best option, especially if it's kind of loose dust on your paper. You don't want to push it in or blend it around too much. So dabbing it will get it off a lot easier than if you rub it like you would normally with an eraser. So now we've got our banana and it's grounded and it's got some gravity and it's sitting on the on a surface which is awesome. Um, and we want to add a little bit of light. So if you wanted to add some more light that is lighter than your yellow, then you could choose a white or a very pale lemon. I really prefer a pale lemon because I find that's a much warmer option and often white is a little bit too washed out or um, I don't know, opaque I suppose. But I really like using very light yellow rather than white when I can because it's warmer, it's got more fun. So I've got a very pale yellow here. So I know I'm breaking all the rules We've only used three colours so far, or four now. So I'm going to add a little bit of this where I can see light. So there's light, and this is much warmer than, than white. If you've only got white, then that's fine too. Don't worry. Let's see how that just lightens up that top bit there. And if the light's coming from top left, then I know it's got to be hitting there. My edges are a bit fuzzy, but I can clean them up. And then it's also hitting over here on the left top side. So I've got a bit of a light there. And then of course all the way down in through the centre. And I'm just pressing very lightly. I don't want a hard, um, hard line here. I just want it to be nice and soft because it, it's kind of like a glow along the edge of the banana, not a hard line like a cartoon. So just, um, and I've, this is a fairly long piece of, pastel so I'm just using the end of it and I'm just rubbing it really softly just along the edges there to get a little glow so what I'm trying to do is get a, a nice shine on there without making it too hard cool and then just under there you know that little bit that was reflecting off the table so I can pop a bit of light just in there and you don't need too much and if it is too much just push it in or put more yellow or something else over it that is a bit much, which is probably not making any sense because my surface isn't white, it's maroon or purpley colour. So you can just soften that off again with a bit of red. I just pop some red over it. 
red and yellow make orange, so that's okay. Because there's white in that lemon colour that I used, it's got this lovely uh, glow to it. But the yellow just warms it up. I just love how that keeps everything nice and sunny and warm. And then you could literally just continue playing around and finding the little highlights. So I can see there's a little bit of light just on the end of the banana there. And you can lighten that up too. Um, those bits on the ends are kind of lumpy. So, you know, you can put a bit of light where you think it might be catching the sun or the light. And then let it fold around into a darker colour. So add some red or blue or even a bit of the yellow to quieten it down a bit. So you can keep layering and playing around with the tones until you've got it how you like it. So I feel like that end's a bit too bright now, it's a bit too... Let's soften that off a little bit. There we go. So just those tiny little bits of highlight really make a difference and they make something pop out of your paper and it really helps to bring it forward. And remember anything that's light will be catching light from, from somewhere. So you've got to figure out what the direction of the light is and where that's shining from. And then you can work out where to put those little bits of sunshine. So I'm just fiddling around, I like to fiddle. And then, you know, if, you, if you need to take it out, you can. So just keep imagining the direction of the light and then working out that, that bit must be sticking out a bit more, so it's got to catch the light. Anyway, I should stop doing that before I make a horrible mess and end up with a bad black banana. <laughs> Have a few of those in the fridge, actually. Probably should do something. I keep thinking I'm going to make a banana something, loaf and bake or whatever, and then I don't. And then I go buy more, and then they go off. Do you do that too? So, um, pretty much it for today. I think, hoping everybody's had a nice time and I'm keen to have a look at what you've done. So we will have um, show and tell in a second so we can hold them all up and have a look. Um, if you feel like your, your, your dots on your banana, you know, I'm just looking at mine because you know, they're a little bit red. So you can cheat and pick up your black or your blue violet, that dark colour and dab a few of them to darken them off a little bit. Well, that's a bit nicer, isn't it? It gives it a bit more drama. So don't feel like you can't break the rules and use other colours. Today's exercise was really just to experience what can happen when you have a limited palette and how you can make things work um, quite easily just with the three primary colours. A lot of fun. I'm going to switch back to the other view in a moment. I like the dark dots on there. That's a bit nice, isn't it? It's creating a little bit more interest with lights and dark. Yeah. Cool bananas. Ha. All right. I'm going to finish that off in, what is it, 10-2. So we'll give you a couple more minutes to um, finish off and then we'll have show and tell and have a look and see what everybody's done. Lovely, lovely. I'm also going to unmute everyone so I don't know, don't feel like I'm here alone. My mouth will work. Anything. Nice. Lovely, nice. So everybody looks very busy. You're all getting stuck into your bananas. <laughs> I can't wait to see them. Any questions, comments? I don't know how you sit there and talk to yourself for two hours. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either, to be honest. I think, what the hell did I spend all that time saying? 
I like no, that no. you talk to us all the time. It's good. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. When I first saw the picture, sorry, Jean. When I first saw the picture come through for a banana, really, you want us to draw a banana? But it's been fun. Yeah, I knew you'd think that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Some subjects seem quite boring and not terribly interesting, but uh, I don't know. I still think it's fun to do different things. Cool. Might seem a bit basic or boring, but it's a good exercise. Exactly, oh, I, I found it really worthwhile to practice the techniques. Yeah, yeah, all that blending and rubbing and and putting pastel down on the paper and getting texture and stuff. I just want mine to be as good as yours straight away. <laughs> it probably <laughs> is, Moana. <No. laughs> It's, mine's a bit too soft. I probably need to make a banana cake with mine too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mine all went in the compost bin, so there's no cakes happening here. <laughs> My husband always says, we need to throw those bananas out. And I say, I was going to make a banana cake, but he knows that I wouldn't. Yeah, same here. Yeah. <laughs> same cool. here. I think I, I did make one recently because that was what everybody was doing in COVID. Yeah. Yeah, saw all these banana cakes on Facebook and stuff. I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to do that too. <laughs> or you can peel them and put them in the freezer and then put them in your smoothies. Yeah, I know. I've got one in the freezer, I think. It's this little black thing in there. <laughs> How's everyone going? Are you happy to hold them all up? Yeah, I'm happy. Awesome. Let's have a look see. Not bad for not opening that box for three or four years. Yeah. Oh, wow, that looks amazing. Beautiful. Oh, they're gorgeous. Oh, that's really oh cool. you're all so clever. Just <laughs> waiting for Karen and then I can get a screenshot. Look at those bananas. They look amazing. They're really <laughs> cool. Just could you put the thing down? That's it, Karen, a little bit closer if you can. Sorry. And then down a bit. That, yep, right there. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, that was amazing. Karen, that is gorgeous. And Lynn, yours is a lovely long slender one. Caroline, that's lovely. Yours has got a little twist, Caroline. I can see it facing the other way. And Moana, that's gorgeous. First, first pastel for a few years. It's awesome. Kathy's is gorgeous. Oh, I love it. Well done. Janine's, yours is awesome. And it's interesting Wendy. how we've all done the same banana, but they're different. Yeah, yeah they're all different. How can, can you see that? How, how um, can I see other people? Okay, if you go onto your screen, can you see a thing yeah. that should say there's a speaker view or a gallery view? So if you have speaker view, you can probably only see whoever's speaking. Right, okay. If you click on gallery view, you should get like a, a Brady Bunch window. There's a little square with a grid. Yeah. A little square with a grid. Yeah. All the little squares. Grid. Yeah. I'm on the, on my iPad, so. Oh, so okay. it'll be on your left hand side. There's a circle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yep, yeah, and it's got a grid pattern on it. There we all are. Oh, there, there you go. Are. Oh, you got it? Okay. Excellent. So, Hold them up and then peek around. Moana, put yours in closer. <laughs> we'll do another another screen grab. Oh, they look amazing. They look so good. You've all done a wonderful job. Gee, they're great. Well done. Beautiful. Milani, that's I got, gorgeous. I got a little bit lost Thank along you. the way. <laughs> you got lost? I felt like I'd be focusing on one thing and you would have gone on to other things. So I was a little bit slow, you know, I felt like oh. I've gone along the way, but I'll get faster. Yeah. Yeah. This is my first thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. amazing. Well done. All right. Fantastic. Mm. That's great. Mm. Great work. Mm. If I am going too fast and you want me to stop or slow down, just, just say, um, I know I do speed along a little bit cause I just, you know, Go, oh, we'll do no. this bit next and that bit next, and no, you know, get carried get, away. I, I, I often get focused on something and sort of like, oh, we've moved on. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. 
and that happens all the time. That's normal. Yeah. Everybody does that. Yeah. Made three phone calls. Oh, put that thing on silent. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was done. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it was it was so nice to see you all. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. That, thank was, you. that was great. Thank you so much. Thank you so yeah. much, and thank you for your Sorry, patience. Enjoyed it. My pleasure, and I love doing this. And next week we're going to do a rooster. Oh, wow. yeah. oh cool! Yeah, cool. yeah. So, so what colour background? Be good. On black. It'll be best okay. on black or I've something got, dark. What about navy yeah. blue? I've got oh, navy yep. blue tomorrow, and I should be able to get some stuff. Great. Thank yeah, you. Navy blue is fine. Okay. Yeah. So anything dark, because we're going to put all those beautiful reds and blues and yellows and bright colours on there. So yeah, that was nice. fun. from that's a crease piece from my old art class. So a I'll what? Go, the one that I used today. It was the only of that um, rough paper that I've got, but it was a, a piece that I had from an old art class in oh. town. So I must have I must have stolen the piece of paper. <laughs> Oh, it has a crease in it, so I've got a crease in the middle of bana the banana. That's oh, all right. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay.